Okay, hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our Aligning HR and IT Forces at a High Growth Startup webinar. Um, this is a part of our, this is actually going to be the first episode or first webinar in our series around experts at electric. Um, and we have two experts at electric with us today, Julian Hutchinson and Janet Hepburn. I almost confused your last names with each other because they have the same initials, makes Twins. writing questions, <laughs> makes writing questions a little more difficult. Um, but I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves before I talk anymore. We'll start with Janet. Hi, I'm Janet. I'm the People Operations Manager here at Electric. Uh, found out actually when you wrote that blurb that I have onboarded more than 100 people <laughs> in the last year. Terrifying. <laughs> crazy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Absolutely crazy stuff. Uh, my name is Julian. I'm the Senior IT Infrastructure Manager. Um, short is uh, IT Manager. Um, yeah, I've been here for about three years since 2016, um, and it feels like I started two days ago. So, time flies. Truly, when well, you're having fun. Yeah, so time yeah, flies when yeah. you're having fun. <laughs> um, okay, awesome. So, without further ado, we're going to just dive right into the webinar. We're going to talk a lot of really good stuff today. Like Janet mentioned, in the year, almost a year to the date, a little over that, um, she's onboarded over 100 people, which is insane. I don't even think I know 100 people, except for all of those people you onboarded. <laughs> um, but we're going to, let's just get started right away. We've got some really good stuff to cover. So we're going to start with a few questions directed at each of you, and then quite a few that I want answers from both of you. Um, but starting with Julian. You started, like you said, three years ago now, um, since essentially our inception, um, which for that matter was quite a bit before we started building out our HR team, our people team. So I would love to know what employee onboarding and offboarding looked like before we brought in our first HR hire or what it looked like from your side, because I started before Janet yeah. and it seemed very smooth to me. So yeah. it's going to be interesting yeah. to figure out like, <laughs> you know. I mean, my experience was um, here's a computer. Um, and at some point that computer didn't work. So I ended up using my own computer and we'll get on that later. But, um, and then I got onboarded by our VP of engineering, um, which was fun, uh, bringing some documentation. I'm not even sure where it went most of the time. Um, I know that when Janet came, she had to clean that up, but it was not as seamless as it could have been. Um, but one great thing that did happen is I got to spend time with each department. Yes, each department was one person and there was three departments in total, um, but I got an in-depth look on each one of them. Um, and that actually helped me and set me up for success in terms of knowing what each department was doing or what their goals were at least early on in the company. Um, but it was very uh, bare bones and basic at that time. Um, we were just figuring things out. There's three of us. For so. sure. For sure. That's what happens when you start at the beginning, I guess, right? Um, okay. And then Janet, can you briefly explain the relationship uh, between HR and IT when you first started at Electric? So not necessarily your first day, because like, like we just mentioned, there wasn't a relationship period because HR didn't exist. Um, but what did that look like in the first couple of months or couple of weeks keeping in time you know, keeping in mind that electric ears are like dog ears. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, I mean, so when I got here, as far as like the IT portion of it was all handled by Julian um, and I was kind of tasked with revamping our onboarding process and, and kind of making sure people were getting like the right exposure and, you know, understanding what the service desk did. Um, so that was really what we did those first three months. Uh, with the help of Julian, I put together a Gantt chart for all of the things that need to happen, you know, before somebody starts and then uh, what needs to happen for a while between the first two weeks of their employment. Um, just again, making sure they get that exposure. Uh, I, the three things that somebody should know within, you know, their first day or three. Uh, who is my manager? What is my job? Uh, what does success look like? Um, like, how do I know if I'm doing a good job? So making sure they knew those things as well as those things for the company. Absolutely. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Seems very straightforward. Um, so how did that kind of compare to previous organizations, that like initial relationship? Where you held a similar role? Like, so maybe just your last job. Yeah, it was way more complicated um, at Electric. My, the previous two roles I held were at recruitment firms where there are a pretty finite number of jobs and needs. Like right there, I mean, maybe there are differences for you know, managers or directors, but for the most part, if you're a recruiter or a business development manager, your needs are kind of similar. They were very 
few differences. So when I came to electric, there are an almost infinite number of jobs and yeah. mostly things that I can barely wrap my head around. Um, so taking the time to like really understand um, all of those different people and their needs and see like who is secretly holding on to something like, oh, like, don't worry, I'll just take care of that. Like, no, <laughs> we, need to, we need to know everything, pull back everything. Like, uh, like sales ops takes care of our, like our sales staff, like uh, neither I nor Julie really touch that. That's fine as long as we know. <laughs> Who owns it? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, so way more complicated here. Um, way more room for error, but that also meant there was a lot of things that we just had to document. For sure. For sure. Um, okay. So what was the first thing you kind of did then in that case when you started at Electric and were looking to enhance the alignment between those two departments? Well, turbine was the big one. Um, eating her own dog food, as it were. So getting all of our different departments set up. Um, so Julian really took the reins on what kind of equipment we needed, because I was like, I need a laptop and a phone. Um, <laughs> so, from that. Um, so making sure that people like kind of understood how we were using it, um, kind of empowering them to update that themselves. But happens from time to time. Yeah. Uh, and then also that Gantt chart, um, like getting to see all of those moving parts in one place gets pretty crazy and you know so we start to find areas where we can either you know delegate or you know this can be somebody else's job or this can happen earlier this should be happening later so by having it documented we are able to like slowly but steadily improve our own process makes sense that that's leads me kind of into my next question that is for Julian more so um how did your team like embrace Janet in this like growing department within our organization like what did those kind of initial conversations look like when you were trying to nail down those processes? What were your thoughts? Oh, we we embraced it. Like it was a <laughs> godsend. Um, I mean, in terms of IT, a lot of people think of it like at the back end, like people ask for things, you get it. But when it comes to on and off wordings, it was department heads just saying, hey, this person starts tomorrow. tomorrow. I, I need a phone that only takes two weeks. Need everything and have a desk and a monitor that can fly. And it was just and completely ramped up and productive. Yeah, I yeah. I need them yeah. ready to go. And as IT, we're looking like uh, we don't know if that's a possible thing. So when HR came to the picture, it was just like they were able to put that wall up and be like, hey, these are the expectations that you can't you can't just run to IT and say I need, I need, I need. It's more of a these are the standards. This is the expectation. It's not just about making them productive, but making them happy as an employee. And I was just like, oh, so we definitely I saw immediate uh, the need for it. Um, and like, we just hit the ground running. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that that's perfect. Okay, so as an organization, we've, we've touched on turbines slightly. Um, but you know, like we value employee onboarding and offboarding in general, like as a mission of our company is something that we um, work on for our customers. We literally built a product around doing that. But aside from the onboarding and offboarding aspects of HR and IT alignment, what are other areas, maybe the, the in-between parts um, that we wouldn't expect where this relationship becomes so necessary and so important? The in between is exactly right. Um, yeah. You know, promotions, people yeah. moving in and out of management. I mean, when you're at a startup, sometimes like you just kind of point to the highest performer and they become a manager. But you know, as we double, triple in size, that doesn't make as much sense anymore. So we've had people go from IC to manager back to IC again. Sorry, um, which creates a lot of issues because we yeah. don't want people having certain access. If yeah. you know you're no longer a manager, like you don't have access to these things. Or once you've left, um, you know, maybe a client facing or you know someone who has access to like our client's most sensitive information, mm -hmm. that needs to be pulled back pretty immediately as soon as they're not in that role. So that's where it becomes we have to like really tightly align. Yeah. Um, and it's a part of like our own internal approval process yeah. that like IT is like, A, yes, this is can this can be done. This is something we have. Um, and then HR or finance saying, okay, yes, there's a business case for this, you know, this level of access makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely spot on. It's it's once they get hired, we have a standard thanks to Turbine, like you get XYZ, but in the between, like sometimes there are per certain people in departments that do have a special skill set and they do need, hey, elevated permission, they need XYZ. Um, and being able to communicate with HR, like, hey, this person wants this mm -hmm. yes or no it's having an approval chain um 
without that, you know, you kind of fail a lot of compliance standards. Yep. So we need to keep <laughs> those. those. Are things. Yeah, those yeah. are things. We need to keep like trails of everything that's going on. Um, so that was that's always a fun thing to go through. Um, honestly, without a communication between HR and IT, that's going to fall apart really fast. So. Absolutely. But definitely with scaling companies, you yeah. kind of end up with people wearing many hats, having access to like super weird stuff that yeah. doesn't make sense. And so having like somebody, in, in this case, it's IT, take the lead on like, okay, who has admin position of like permissions that shouldn't, what do we need to roll back? Yeah. Um, really important. Yeah. I mean, we've had people like Janet said, go from being a director and having access to, you know, sales things and being a director in completely different departments. Like, okay, we need to cut off <laughs> X, Y, Z. And it starts off with having a trail of what they had in the first place so that we can <laughs> modify that and change into what they need now. So just in case something does happen, it's just like, hey, we know what they have access to and they have nothing more than that. Okay, so I wanna dive into like the juiciest <laughs> part of this whole conversation, which is like we've grown an insane amount. Like any like comparatively to like high growth startups, we're in that same kind of lane of like, we are ramping up quickly, we are scaling insanely. Um, so I would love to hear from your guys' perspective um what was like happening behind the scenes like how was this like humanly possible because i think a lot of people were like we don't know how <laughs> like somehow it's just working and we're not gonna question it and we're just gonna let them do what they need to do um but what did that like look like for you guys we were in communication constantly constantly like there's not something that happened that i'm just like i'm gonna double check just to make sure we're on the same page um either new pipe people coming in people changing roles honestly i didn't take anything that someone else said at face value i was just like okay i hear you i will I research this <laughs> and i ran right to janet and be like hey what's going on tell me give me the low down skinny um and then we would go from there um yeah that's basically the crux <laughs> of it um being really in constant communication, obviously it helps that like we're friends, we're friendly with each other. Um, but also him being able to pretty quickly articulate what IT's needs were yeah. allowed me to set those expectations and block for him, you know, where I needed to. Um, so he would know kind of, he had a, a decent idea of what pipeline looked like. So it could, even though I don't recruit at all and I don't care until the <laughs> offer letter goes out, I had to keep an eye on those things to make sure that he wouldn't be bombarded with you know 15 computers like yeah. a week before a start date yeah. right absolutely absolutely um speaking of that in the realm of okay growing the entire organization from 50 to like 160 people where we're at now I mean, probably a little higher than that um what did that look like for your team Janet, the people team um what did scaling within that specific team look like in order to like obviously accommodate these big onboarding requests and offboardings. Sure, so onboarding. I mean, we have a like a pretty incredible VP of people that has like such a good sense of our business and the needs of like each individual mm -hmm. department, which really, really helps um, as far as, you know, IT and HR working together um, and really any initiative that we take on, like making those business cases. Um, but, you know, we need a, a lot of manpower. We need a lot of um, kind of specific uh, strengths and skills. Um, so we have three recruiters, talent acquisition people. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, an office manager who's responsible for kind of the workplace experience and, you know, is my left hand um, when, you know, I need like desk set up, stuff like that. She's, she's right there. Very hard carry. <laughs> yes. Um, so that's how we've grown. Um, we'll probably be adding like another people operations type person in the next month or so, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we definitely uh, skewed a little bit more talent acquisition just because that was where the need was. So yeah. okay, I just needed to fill in whoever else I could. <laughs> yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, okay, so let's dive in a little deeper to the challenges that each of you faced during this time. And then um, in order to not separate this into two separate questions, how did you overcome those challenges? Or if you haven't overcome them, like how are you kind of mitigating them and like kind of you know, working around whatever those challenges may be. And for either one of you, both, you know. 
I mean, one of the challenges that we had, at least in the very beginning, was resetting those expectations with different departments. Um, you can't just, you know, teleport a computer into someone's lap automatically. Um, also letting them know, like, yes, we understand that you, it's a business, we need them to be productive, but people, I mean, they need to have a great experience. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even though I'm IT and a lot of people think, oh, like, IT, they just, you know, push buttons, they make things work. We're also thinking about the customer experience, like the, like, employees are our customers we want to make sure that they're set up ready to go it's very frustrating when you know you start and you don't have the tools that you need and i feel bad because you know that's kind of my thing i want everyone to feel like they're part of our family um and i guess that helps with it but yeah. definitely um a huge center on the people part of it is making sure that people have what they they need um resetting expectations and then having the hardware and the hardware came it wasn't that bad. It could have been worse. I yeah. kind of knew when Gross Bar would come up to me and be like, hey, I'm going to have 10 people starting. I need computers. I kind of expected it. Um, but it's definitely making sure like he knew that he needs to give me a heads up. So, yeah. 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 Like obviously we're going to fulfill it. But yeah. next time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, hey, Ben's here. Who's Ben? Yeah. <laughs> he started two days oh, ago. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> um, no, that's so good. That it's like, and again, I can't stress it enough. Like it's being part of the organization. We just didn't even, you don't realize that it was going on because it was yeah. going so seamlessly. And then I also think, and this is something Janet, you mentioned yesterday when we were talking about this, um, is how you like, like we, what really distinguishes our IT team or any IT team from like being a good IT team to a great IT team is being focused around like customer success and that, you know, your team members are your customers, which is like a weird kind of like nuance of the role. But I just thought that was like a great, great point on your end. Yeah. And it's like a very strong part of like being a good HR IT person, because if you are not like keeping your customer, your mm -hmm. internal employees in mind, and you have people going for weeks with like a janky computer that doesn't mm -hmm. quite work right, but yeah. they don't want to say anything. Cause like, Oh, like he's going to be so mad at me <laughs> right. or, you know, it's any, any number of uh, interpersonal or you know, business issues that can come up that, you know, you, someone needs to be able to talk to HR about mm -hmm. if you seem closed off or judgmental or like you don't have like the best possible solution for all parties in mind, you're, you're going to just stymie yourself. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, okay, up until this point, this is the inflection point of the conversation, but also it's about the inflection point. What did you guys view as that turning point when you began to feel like this effort, that's this front-loaded effort that you were putting in from the get-go to like establish these processes that weren't there before? When did you begin to feel like they were finally becoming standard and turnkey and like, we can have, bring other people on the team to carry these out and they'll make a ton of sense? Um, that could be in terms of headcount or whatever else. I'm going to stop talking like, and <laughs> answer that question. Um, it was, for me, and I feel like it was also for Jen, is when we actually moved into a new space. Um, we were, one of our huge issues was we were growing so fast. We had no space for people. We had one floor and then we had to expand to another floor. And then even then we need to add more desks to it. Mm -hmm. And every week was just like, we have 10 more people starting. We have two seats. What's going to happen? At some point I was sharing a desk with someone. Right. So it was once we got into the space, that whole, you know, problem that we had with where people are going to go disappeared. Um, and then we were able to focus more on, you know, hey, we know where they're going to go or where they're going to sit. We know we already set the standards. We have expectations. It's like we just have to get it done. Um, so that was a huge weight off of us, in all honesty. Um, space is important. So especially when you're going from 50 to 160 that fast. Yeah, absolutely. Which is like, again, and like I was saying this yesterday, but I didn't even think of like I was sharing, I think at one point, a charger with like five yeah. other people. <laughs> but that was even before Janet started. And yeah. so it's it's just so funny because it's like the obvious solution is like mm -hmm. more space. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the people need more space. Um, it's yeah. But here we are in our big huge office which yep. is now we have summer office. space you... on the floor. Oh, all on yeah, the floor. Yeah, like the amount yeah. it literally felt like you know you're like i didn't know even half these people worked mm -hmm. here until we moved here yeah um so when did we start using our own tool to handle a lot of this process development a year ago within like a 
two or three weeks of us starting. Yeah. Um, I sat down with all of the managers, like walked through what each department needed. Um, and again, I, most of the time I got as granular as like per role. And then really we end up having to kind of redo those every time there's like a new director or, yeah. you know, somebody with like a specific type of, type of experience comes in. Um, so like those are not set in stone and they're like, I still go into turbine pretty regularly and, you know, send like, hey, does this look good for, you know, our, you know, new chief marketing officer? Like, what does she need access to and getting sign off on that? But yeah, about it, about it. we don't use it for offboarding, but we do use it for onboarding. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, when Janet started, turbine was still in its infancy. It was still being rolled out. I was using spreadsheets to keep track of all the links of all the hardware that we had. It's like, hey, this person starts. I know. Boom, boom, boom. Um, I knew each department and there was a ton of them and uh, departments are like split up into sub departments and that's where it got complicated. Um, but once we had turbine, we just put it in there, plugged in everything. We still do have to update someone new stars like, hey, I kind of want to change it a little bit. Um, but we were able to break it down in turbine and kind of hit the ground running. So really quickly, we, we, we got on that platform. Yeah, and I think it goes to say, like without saying for just about any tool that you add to your tech stack is that it's like, it is what you make of it. You yeah. know, you can't just yeah. set department departmental profiles from the get-go and be like, okay, finance team will yeah. now operate like this <laughs> yeah. forever. Yeah. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. you need a different mouse? That actually isn't- Sorry, not yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work for us. Um, yeah, but it's, it's what you make of it. It's, you know, how up-to-date you keep it. Um, aside from our own tool, what other kind of tools, apps, software, hardware, any kind of where, um, what are they, what, which of those are like key to um, both on offboarding, uh, which is obviously like a huge kind of theme within this webinar, but just in your jobs in general, um, which I know is a hard question to SIT because you're like all of them, um, but which the, the overlap more so and your tech stack as well, Dana. Yeah, I guess I've been just like thinking about like our chart, like if, Somebody, if somebody isn't in just work, they're not getting paid, so they're not working for us, so yeah. they better not have a computer yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and then even for like the like the real employee experience of once they're being onboarded, uh, using Lessonly, um, and so it's slowly being adopted through the rest of the company for ongoing training. Yeah. Um, but it is very important for like the first three days. Like here's the rundown of each of the departments. Uh, it prompts people to you know do things like take their harassment prevention yeah. training. Uh, make sure they're adding pictures so other people know who they are in Slack. Um, so those are those two are pretty important for me. You know, outside of using electric. What about going from like recruiting someone to like uh, having them like start greenhouse <laughs> uh greenhouse is the only way i know that all of our offer letters have gone up properly um and that again if we have everything we need prior to this person starting it kicks off the background check process because that's like another easy thing to block for it if their yeah. background check isn't done they are not starting mm -hmm. and we um squished our start dates so that they it's only every other week so i'm not you know doing a full onboarding process every single week yeah so that was yeah. also really helpful yeah. yeah um and again all of those expectations are set so this isn't a, a new conversation yeah. <laughs> well it really goes to show i think too that like you there are so many parts to this process of the employee experience like throughout their entire tenure, but especially at the beginning where it's like, it's so, once you really talk through what each step is, you're like, no wonder things slip through the cracks. Like we need, you know, you can't, can't rely on Google Sheets forever. Although I've, I've tried for a long time, but um, so why do you both think that it is so difficult for two departments, especially particularly these two, so particularly IT and HR departments, why is it so hard for them traditionally to align and find common ground? Sometimes they're reporting to totally different people and places and it yeah. can become a little bit adversarial. Yeah. Um, they're always competing a lot. It's yeah. like, it's more of a competition. Like I want to do this, you want to do this and there's no compromise in the middle. It's like, especially when you have, unfortunately there are stubborn people that are just, I'm not going to do that. Um, we kind of go off a of policy like bend, don't break. We have our set standard policies that we both know. It was like, hey, these are things that are non-negotiable. Janet has things that are non-negotiable, but the other stuff like we can work on to fix. Like I'm, yes, I, I would like to have a two week kind of leeway on when someone starts, but like hey, if we need someone to fill a role that's super important, like I, if I have the equipment, I'm not going to say no. It's bending, not breaking. Um, so yeah. 
That's, I'm going to get t-shirts for us. <laughs> Same thing, don't worry. I think that's really an important initiative that needs to be carried out. Yeah. Um, so what does our onboarding process look like today? Um, and get, given the sake of time, maybe just like a one sentence, two sentence answer. Turbine. Um, and then we'll get to <laughs> there you go. Okay, Turbine. That works. Turbine. Everything is put into Turbine and then from there it just allows us to put all the information into one place and when they start there's uh, like documentation given to them and they have everything in one place. So it's we put them in there, everything they need is there. I mean there's also handbooks and stuff like that, but the main point for, for them to get all of their applications and equipment, Turbine. Works for me. Works for me. Um, okay, so I want to like pick out, I, we have a few questions left, but I want to hear from the audience uh, what questions you guys have, so be sure to submit those as well. Um, but with, fun game, fun, <laughs> fun game to wrap this up. Um, in both of your opinions, and I'm going to count down, so don't get ahead of me, <laughs> uh, what do you think is the key in one word to a healthy relationship between HR and IT departments? Let me count down. Damn it, I see. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Communication. Communication. Yeah, <laughs> it's gotta be. That's, that, is, that is the whole, the whole theme. Yeah, big time. I don't think we would have survived that whole stint, and it's still kind of going, um, without talking to each other, having a way for us to know what's going on between departments. Um, I like that answer. You both did, apparently. <laughs> um, and then my last question before we uh, give it over to the Q and A portion of this is from both of you, what practices would you recommend HR for you, Janet, um, start implementing right away in terms of aligning with IT? And then same question for you, Julian. Um, what practices as an IT pro would you recommend implementing immediately to make sure you guys are aligned? Uh, Janet, you can start. Easy, it's taking the time to understand your business um, and all of the roles within your business. It's pretty hard for me to make a case for why someone should or should not have access to something if they don't understand what their job is. Like, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, 100%, um, I gotta agree with that. It's, it's kind of just knowing what each department is doing, documenting that. Um, so when you get at questions like, hey, you know, I'm in sales, I want access to you know, our ticketing system for the desk. Like, I understand your job has nothing to do with that and I can articulate on, on why. So it's understanding what the environment is, documenting it, um, and you know, just going about it that way. Okay. That I'm loving these answers. Uh, Want to bring it over to the audience now. Um, we've got a few great questions in here, but we'll make sure to wrap up around 30. First one is coming from Jay. How do you handle non-standard requests? So anything out of the ordinary, um, which in New York is like everything's out of the ordinary. So just yeah. the craziest ones. I mean, we, we do get those. Um, we have a couple of um, people that really like their stuff the way they are. Uh, we have a two kind of system approval process. It's they submit the request. It has to one go to their manager first. So the manager has to be aware of this request that the set expectation with the department, blah, blah, blah. The second part is if it's a permission thing, like you can't just change permissions. We need to know why you're changing permissions. So that probably that goes through HR. Um, if it's more for they want to purchase something that has to be approved by finance. Um, if it's something related to security that has to go through our CISO. So it's just one. Also, this is for compliance. So we got to make sure we have our ducks in a row. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, okay, we have one comment in here that I feel that I have to share. It's actually from a former colleague who moved to Texas. Oh! Um, she just wants to say, and I think this goes to show that it's like, it's very evident how healthy of a relationship uh, our, these two partners have, but she just wanted to say, no question. Just happy to be here. Love you guys so much. Um, but that speaks to it. I got goosebumps, Danny. Danny. <laughs> <laughs> um, we miss you, Danny. Uh, okay, so one other question that we have here for you guys is, okay, we talked a lot about onboarding. What does the offboarding process look like for your, for us, for you guys? Yeah. It, it depends on the type of offboarding. <laughs> um, involuntary terminations look a little bit different than voluntary terminations um because and actually in some ways involuntary is a little bit simpler because yeah. here's when the meeting is this is the end of their day cut off access immediately and we just cut everything and yeah. god forbid um you know julian isn't here yeah i have the ability to cut off all the most important <laughs> <laughs> items like just in case right yeah. right like we always think of worst case scenarios 
for a lot of our voluntary um, terminations, there's a little bit of like a handoff process or, you know, maybe they're, you know, spending their notice period, like working on a specific project. Um, and so like, maybe there's like, okay, they don't need access to these systems, but we're going to keep these live. Yeah. And so it, again, it's a matter of communication being pretty tight on like auditing everything so that nothing ever gets missed. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's basically like cut it off. Here's the date. Um, we have a Gantt chart for that as well. So we go off and tick off all the different myriad items <laughs> there yeah. are. I feel like our offboardings have gone just as smoothly as our, our onboardings in all honesty, and that's a miracle in itself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just sometimes people need more wiggle room. They're doing something and, and for me to know not to disconnect their email at six o'clock, you know, do it maybe at a different time mm -hmm. goes back to communication. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that actually looks like all the questions we have. So I will uh, give us a break there. If anyone has any more questions to ask or anything along those lines, if you any thoughts that you had, um, any questions for Janet or Julian, please be sure to send them my way and I will make sure they get to the right people with the right answer. I promise I won't give you uh, my marketing answer <laughs> to the questions. Uh, but thank you guys again so much for joining me today. I'm really excited. I couldn't have started it off with a better uh, pair of people. Same initials, it goes, it goes to prove. Twinsies. 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 Uh, but thank you guys all again and we will be sending out a recording of this webinar soon. Uh, look forward to having you guys at the next one. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.